Hello. This video tutorial will explain the WIP graphical user interface and how to represent the system to be modeled by using WIP elements. The shortcut icon to access WIP should appear in your desktop or type WIP on the search bar. After you have entered the license data, username and registration code, you need to enter your initials, in my case, AMMA. This is useful for having control over who makes changes to the model. In the graphical user interface, you have a menu. This menu changes depending on the view you are in. There are five views, schematic, data, results, scenario explorer, and notes. You can access each one depending on where you want to add elements, enter data, explore the results, or add notes to the model. In this video tutorial, we will focus on the schematic view. In the schematic view, we have the elements. The quantity of each element is shown in parentheses. In this case, there are three rivers. There are no diversions. There are two reservoirs. We can see it here, for example, central reservoir. There are two groundwater elements. There is no other supply element. And there are six demon sites. We can expand this panel. As you can see, the software is shown in English. We can change it to another language. Under the area option of the menu, go to change language. You can choose any of these. Before developing a WIP model, we must understand how WIP will represent the system or basin we want to model. This is done by converting the components of a system or watershed into WIP elements. There are 14 element types, river, diversion, reservoir, groundwater, other supply. We use this element to represent any water source that is not being modeled and represents a water inflow. Demon site, catchment, wastewater treatment plant, runoff infiltration, transmission link, return flow, runoff river hydro, flow requirement, and the stream flow gauge. The river element represents surface water. It is necessary to assign or model the stream flow. We have two options. The first one, using a stream flow time series, simulated by any other hydrological model or estimated by another method. We can enter a stream flow time series to allocate the available flow in the river element. And the second one, building the hydrological model in WIP. Either method could be used to supply the available stream flow in the river element. To develop a hydrological model, we add catchments. This represents the entire area of the basin, subbasins, or portion of the basin when it is divided into elevation bands. These catchments must be connected to the river element by using runoff infiltration links from the catchment to the river. WIP estimates the water balance of the catchment and transfers the outflows to the river through this link. How to develop a hydrological model is addressed in detail in the hydrological video tutorials. We have already seen these three elements river, catchment, and runoff infiltration links. You do not only want to simulate hydrology, but also a system where supply and demand processes interact. There are several types of demands, such as population, agricultural, livestock, and industrial. The way to allocate water to the demands is by adding a diversion or a transmission link element. A diversion is used when you want to build a distribution network. You can connect a diversion to a diversion element, but not to a transmission link. A transmission link element is a direct link between the supply source, which could be a diversion, river, groundwater, or other supply to a demand. That is the difference between a diversion and a transmission link. In many cases, these demands have several supply points. In this example, the population demand has two supply points. 
one from the diversion and another one from the river. In general, the demon sites do not consume 100% of what they would draw from the water supply. There is a water discharge. Then we need to add a return flow element. We can locate it downstream or to any other source already included in the model. There are two types of reservoir, on-stream and off-stream reservoirs. The on-stream reservoirs are located on the river, while the off-stream reservoirs need a diversion to be filled and discharge water. There are two types of hydroelectric plants, impoundment or run of the river. If the hydroelectric plant depends on a reservoir, they will be impoundment. If it depends only of the available stream flow, it will be run of the river. In many cases, you need to set up operation rules for a system to work properly. Sometimes a flow requirement is needed. The flow requirement element tries to force the model to meet the flow rate assigned to this element considering demand priorities. For example, if we have a run of the river hydroelectric plant, the turbine has a minimum technical flow. That flow would be the flow requirement. Similarly, a diversion could require a minimum flow for operational reasons. The flow requirement elements could be used to assess if environmental flows are met. In that case, we could include a flow requirement downstream of the water intake. Then we could evaluate whether the environmental flow is met or not, or even force the system to meet it and evaluate the effect that it has on supplying the demands. To evaluate the model performance, if the simulated flows correspond to observed flows, we need to include a stream flow gauge. This element allows you to compare simulated and observed stream flow. This information is required to estimate goodness of fit metrics. When you include a stream flow gauge element, a stream flow time series is needed. We can also add groundwater elements. It is possible to add a transmission link element from the groundwater to the demand site. Finally, we can model water quality as well. We can include a wastewater treatment plant before the discharge point.